Hello and welcome back to the channel and in this video I'm going to be discussing whether you can get a Android head unit for a double DIN uh, for less than £100. So this is the unit that I've decided to buy. It's a high kitty um, unit and uh, I've installed it in the car. I'll click here so you can see the uh, unit installed in the car. Um, however it has been removed back from the car and there's a reason for that and I'm just going to run you through some of the reasons uh, why I'm not going to be keeping this in the car so um, the pluses to this is it has got physical switches that are illuminated uh, so that's great and it's got plenty of uh, USB ports um, it all falls down when you actually come to install the bit in the car so it's just got a couple of holes there and it comes with these extremely cheap mounting brackets which um, are universal and don't seem to serve any purpose in any car because they don't work with any double din fitting uh, systems. So I end up having to purchase a double din fitting kit to try and make this fit within the car. Um, even then um, it was a Bit of a fight to get that installed so first of all installation is not great um, although it can be made to fit uh, when it's in there it does look good the screen uh, the brightness is not great um, inside the car and um, the color of the screen is very uh, bleached out so um, if you are trying to drive in bright sunlight it's not great you can't really see the colors and um, on the, the plus side of it is that it has got lots of connections on the back here and one of the reasons that I went for this particular unit is it looked like it had a couple of cooling fans on the back but as it turns out when you get the unit in reality these are fake vents um, so we've got um, a GPS antenna DAB antenna normal antenna lots of USB ports additional port for CAN network, the standard connection and all of these uh, speaker outlets. The problem comes in that none of the um, USB ports seem to detect anything being connected um, or a telephone being connected so when you plug them in nothing happened. Um, it would charge the phone and provide an output but didn't seem to work. I wasn't interested in using the USB mp3 files in there so I didn't try that and I didn't try the auxiliary port because these are very old-fashioned connections I'm never going to use them um, the microphone on the front when I tried to use it didn't seem to work and um, the big problem that I had is that this touch screen um, you can see I've removed the film from protective film from there and um, has become covered in fingerprints so um, not a great screen in terms of keeping it clean uh, but the touch screen was completely unresponsive a, a patch about that big on it just wouldn't work so when I went to use it um, to enter uh, places in for the navigation couldn't get that to operate um, Android Auto was hit or miss as to whether it would plug in connect uh, I hadn't tried it on Apple CarPlay um, because the Android Auto wasn't working and that would be my primary use for it is Android Auto um, and yeah that didn't work it didn't even work if you were wiring it in so not a great uh, user experience um, I'll clip to show you some of the bits and thoughts of the bits uh, in the actual um, infotainment system But one of the big reasons to get this unit was to install um, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. And as you can see, um, we can't get that to connect. Um, it did start to connect, um, but I've had other issues with the unit. Uh, the touch screen around this area became completely unresponsive. Got some great big keys there. and I know the passcode is one Oh, we can't get one. So basically this section of the touchscreen is not working. 
started working all by itself um, for no apparent reason uh, but as we can see um, that doesn't work um, this uh, does support illumination so um, as you can see when we turn the headlights on all of this illuminates up um, so that, those bits work um, doesn't look like we're going to get that to connect anytime soon um, as we can see the time or we can't see but the time is completely wrong on this um, can't seem to get it to connect thinks we're doing 23 miles an hour uh, when we're not um, it does come with a DAB aerial and a GPS aerial um, I haven't properly installed either of those because I was not confident in this unit and um, was surprised if it would live up to the expectations um, I've tried connecting the phone wired to it and it still doesn't work it doesn't make any difference whether wire it or wirelessly connect it and um, we still don't get uh, Android Auto anymore um, comes with built-in navigation um, but uh, since I've reset the unit that seems to have completely disappeared so no navigation uh, built on this now uh, you obviously can make calls here um, and uh, it should pull all your contacts through uh, on there I haven't tried making calls on it because to be honest with the lack of ability to use Android Auto I'm, I am going to be re returning this unit um, but I thought it would be useful to uh, show you what you would get f yeah, for less than £100. Um, to be fair this is £120 reduced down to I think it was £95. Um, so uh, yeah it, uh, it, is, it is an expensive unit but uh, there's lots of units out there that are less expensive than this um, so I doubt they work um, very well at all. Um, so radio is there um, as we can probably hear it just won't tune into any channel um, just searches through and doesn't pick it up I'm not sure what any of this FM3 thing is the button is completely unresponsive um, yeah just not not great um, I'm guessing this would automatically search but it does nothing um, so yeah completely useless um, there is a DAB there um, probably not going to get any music because of where I'm parked at the moment but the DAB works kind of um, Possibly if uh, I relocate the aerial in a better place, um, it would be better. I mean, the good thing about it is it does have lots of options on there. It is a standard Android um, touchscreen, so we've got the likes of YouTube, the Play Store. Uh, also, the steering wheel controls don't work. Um, there is a setup program. It doesn't work at all, so no steering wheel controls uh, with this unit. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned in there is that when I did try driving back listening to DAB it cut out and made a pop so loud uh, through the speakers it did actually sound like something had fallen off the car or hit the car. Um, so again not a great experience from the DAB unit. Um, it's one thing to lose signal but to when it comes back into signal to put these loud bangs into the car when you're driving just really not a great experience um, so uh, um, this unit came from Amazon and I'm a little bit disappointed in Amazon for allowing this to be for sale there are other other units uh, the same as this something like I think knee power rim body cam power or something lots of different um, units exactly the same with this under a different brand name so it's obviously being manufactured um, probably in China and then uh, particular importers are picking up and put their own branding on it um, but um, either way in my opinion this is one definitely to stay clear of um, other thing is it did potentially tell you what your road speed was 
which I couldn't change from kilometres to miles per hour and we use miles per hour in, in the UK so kilometres an hour is completely irrelevant. I could never get the clock to update. Just so many different problems with this unit um, that uh, it's definitely not worth spending £100. I can't speak for every unit under £100. Um, but uh, definitely this one is going back to Amazon um, and uh, the steering wheel controls didn't work on this unit and when I uh, tried to get support from the um, the brand um, nothing came back from them they didn't even try to help and uh, a third uh, a, a, a member of the public piped up and said that it was complete junk uh, he said uh, don't even try to get the steering wheel controls to work because the unit just freezes and locks up on him and it is complete junk. So, um, yeah, not a great experience. So, I'm going to be returning this and we're going to see what we can get for under £200. See if we can get a better unit uh, and installation. Like I said, I'll put afterwards what comes in the box. So, if you did want to take your chances on this unit, uh, you've got all the information you need. So let's have a look to see what we've got in the box. Starting off with the box itself, it's um, a very plain brown box. So not much to see, no branding on this, uh, this product. I would imagine that this is um, a generic Chinese made component and then the uh, manufacturers or suppliers of them that bring them into Europe um, put their own branding on them but in this case they haven't bothered to do any kind of branding um, there is a lot in this box um, so jam-packed um, and the good thing about this kit is it comes with a lot of different things so we've got a USB cable to come into the car so you can connect your phone to the car and a GPS antenna there so you can pick up GPS signals um, some phono leads there and backup camera in that packet there. Uh, this is the DAB aerial. Has a remote control, so if your rear passengers want to control the front screen, you can do. This is the main power supply cable, and I think this is the weak point on this unit. Um, I've had a look into this and this is a standard aftermarket 16 pin connector and uh, they're expecting you to manually wire this in to your existing harness on the car. I'm not going to be doing that because um, I don't know if this unit is going to be any good. So if I send this back with a damaged lead uh, there's a possibility of getting that rejected. So I've bought a new harness and from an ease of point of view that um, I want to make sure that it's all wired in correctly. So I've got some leads coming to make this work. Uh, then in the box we've got the basically the bits that mount the unit into the car. Um, a very basic user manual. It is in English, um, but it's very basic. And This is the unit itself, 